Hello, this is Jeff Hartman, known as the Neptune Man. And today I've got a dryer. A friend asked me to work on this dryer. It was not heating. It is a gas dryer. And part number is a 110.730.12101. And the nice thing that made it a little bit easier to work on is you got this kick panel down here. You can actually take that kick panel off and then it will give you access to the you know the gas valve assembly and you can see what it's doing by just removing this panel and when you work on appliances you want to make sure you're safe and you want to pull the power to do your initial assessment and sometimes you might have to repower the machine up again to take some voltage readings or something and uh, so I, I do want you to be safe while you work on the appliances and if you uh, you know are concerned about doing that, then you may want to call an expert in. That's fine. Uh, once you get a part, you might think that oh, I think I can fix this part that's broke. So um, be safe, and there will be some sharp edges inside. They have um, the sheet metal edges will be sharp in most cases inside because the manufacturers don't have to worry about those because normally whatever's exposed to the consumer is what they normally worry about in most cases so uh let's go on to the next picture and i'll show this uh, panel removed in the right corner and right here is the gas valve assembly and what i went over to their house and i looked at it and we started a machine up and this uh, igniter started glowing. That's right here. It got two wires and a ceramic base. It glowed red. And then the gas kicked on and the flame came out. Looks good. However, I waited till it cycled a few times where, you know, it reaches temperature. The thermostat says, oh, shut off. And then it's called to come back on again. Well, the igniter would come on and I'd get a little faint click. And then uh you know i brought an igniter with me just in case because those are the common things that fail is igniter and now we know that these uh the next option was this coil here and i didn't really consider the thermal fuse because the igniter worked and typically when the thermal fuse blows or opens up because of heat and so you don't have a fire the um uh, igniter won't work after that they lock that out when the fuse blows so it's protection mm -hmm. safety feature so my next option was to replace these coils that's the next thing to go you got the igniter you got the thermal fuse and then you got the coils now luckily I could get a short stubby screwdriver in here it's a little Phillips stubby screwdriver and reach in there and unscrew those two screws and take that bracket off and uh, we'll go to the next picture and here I've got the bracket removed and I removed the connectors now one thing you want to uh, be aware of is when you take off this this front coil had the three terminals on it well there's a metal sleeve and that metal sleeve has to stay on this post that had it or it will affect the uh, gas valves operation so sometimes when you pull that front coil off it might the sleeve may come up with it and be stuck inside the uh, coil and you want to pull it out or push it out either way and then put it back on your post right here otherwise the um, uh, you know that this sleeve does not come with the coil kit and if you lose that sleeve I'm not sure if you have to buy another gas valve uh, I didn't want to lose it so I was really careful with that metal sleeve okay here's another picture of the two coils uh, you know see so you got your three terminals here and you got your two terminals here and I did check this with an ohmmeter uh, I this is pin one pin two and pin three and then I looked at these two of the original coils and then the failed coils and I did see a difference so that kind of verified that it was the coils that are bad now you notice there's holes on this bracket and there's dimples on these uh, coils so theoretically you can't put the coils on backwards because they're keyed with these dimples and uh, so this one here will go in this one because the terminals go away from this bracket so uh, when you put it back in uh, it, you can't really mix these up without breaking something you have to break the dimples off or something so uh, you don't have to worry about that so on a gas dryer the main causes of failure are the igniter now I'm I was pretty lucky on this unit because I could remove that kick panel but on some units you got to take it all apart to get to the igniter and then you could unplug the igniter and then ohm it and if you get a high resistance that means it's open and you should get a low 
I think I, I was getting about three to five ohms on that one. So, uh, cause I went ahead and ohmed it out to see what it, you know, it showed. But if you can't watch it glow, you got to ohm it out. And that doesn't mean that your, you know, if your thermal fuse could be bad. You want to ohm that out as well while you have it apart. And uh, if your thermal fuse is bad, you want to check for lint buildup inside that cover on the front. There's a cover. And uh, I think on that particular model, that's where the lint screen is. So when you're pulling that lint screen in and out, lint can be falling down into the bottom of that pocket there. And it can actually clog that up over time. And then that thermal fuse is doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to prevent the dryer from overheating. And then also on the back side, you've got your discharge hose. It goes outside for venting. That has to be free and clear too. If you have buildup in there over the years, you might want to get the, um, you know, they have some dryer brushes where you run through there and clean out the, uh, the lint buildup. And when you go outside, you should feel a good airflow with that dryer running. And if you don't, if it's a weak airflow, then that could be a problem. Is you're not moving enough air through that dryer, which makes the gas uh, furnace part of it or the uh, electric element get too hot. Next, we talked about the thermal fuse. Ohm it out. It should be close to zero ohms. And if it is blown, you want to find out why. I have had some cases where the thermal fuse failed, but it I replaced it and the machine worked from there on out. So sometimes I think the thermal fuses just from cycling they can open up just you know 10 12 15 years so you want to make sure that uh, I did check for lint buildup and stuff and I was pretty confident that the new fuse wasn't going to blow but you never know till you try it sometimes you just have to replace the fuse and try it see what happens and keep an eye on it and third was the coils for the gas valve 279 834 is the number and it's a common kit she's on a lot of the whirlpool stuff and you can own them out and on the particular the ones i had the new one the one that had the two terminals i got 1.45 k and i think i got 1.2 on the uh the old coil so it's close and then um the three terminal coil i got um i think one and two was open and of course it, uh, these were different too so the coil was definitely bad and that was the problem and typically, you know, if you see your machine light up, shut off, and fails to light up after that, it's like it worked every time on the first cycle. I'm not sure why. It might be something how those coils are wired up. I'm not sure. But uh, if you get that symptom where it lights, but then don't light reliably after that, then it's probably those coils. And they're about 20 bucks. They're not too bad. So, again, you want to be safe working on your machines unplug them and then you may have to plug them back in to do some electrical checks and uh, visually check the igniter make sure it's working and um, for parts you can just go to washerbearings.com slash parts that'll take you into a nice website you can enter in your model number and or you can call the 1-800-369-0999 now what i'm finding with a lot of the kenmore products is they got that 110 number and when you put that in the search box on the website it won't you know, recognize it because there's so many different models based off his number so in that case you'd want to call the 800 number and uh and then you just give them your model number and then they can look that up because that's a parts line only and they have the you know, operators who are experts in looking up parts so uh when you call you also might want to have your model and your serial number because they may need the serial number for certain parts okay if you have any questions please contact me again i'm jeff known as the neptune man and I'm at washerbearings.com. I got some other sites too. Um, NeptuneWasher.com, NeptuneDryer.com. I've got a number of sites. And uh, I'm here to help you guys. I want you guys to save money. Okay, thanks. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.